Welcome back. You're still watching Fin Week Money Matters. Remember, this is the show that helps you manage your finances. As the year draws to a close, many investors are meeting with their financial advisors to decide how their savings should be invested. However, the sluggish economy, an expensive stock market and possibly a looming ratings downgrade and a probable interest rate increase have created quite a challenging climate for investment at the mo for investors at the moment. But we are now joined by a panel of experts that are going to help us discuss the potential investment investment options. In studio with me is equity analyst Simon Sylvester from Resco Asset Manager Management uh, and also fund manager or chief investment officer Quibus Lowe. He's from Contigo and he's joining us from our Cape Town studio. Uh, let me start with you uh, Quibus uh, there in our Cape Town studio. What are maybe the first things that investors need to take into account before they start making changes to their portfolio? Hi. Yeah. No. It's if you look at the investment environment at the moment, it's it's pretty daunting. You've raised a couple of the the issues and the risks abound. But you know, I can think back when I was still with uh, Sunlam. Every year in January, you sit and you look ahead and you say, "What's our investment strategy going to be?" And with the, without exception, within a half an hour, somebody says, "You know." This is the most difficult decision I've had to make. It's the most uncertain times we've had we've ever seen. Uh, my point being that it will always be difficult. It will always be uncertain. And I think you need to look for an uh, asset management company or a fund manager that's been around the block at least once or twice, been there, seen the, what's happened and, and how to actually, what to do in or under these circumstances. Yeah. Uh, there's always the, the old Chinese proverb that says the, the best time to, to plant a tree is 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, the second best is today. So if we are looking at balanced funds, which are normally long-term investors mm -hmm. and people investing for retirement, you need to look 20 years ahead and say, where will I invest now? And that will should uh, shape your investment decision. Right. Quibus, I'm going to just well. interject there on the balanced funds uh, because we want to get a bit more information on exactly what they are and how they work. So I'm going to come to Simon Nine studio uh, because you heard Quibus telling us about planting those trees. You know, 20 years ago was the best time to have done it. In terms of asset classes though, where should we have been planting those trees? What's the best asset class to be in at the moment? Yeah, so we need to look forward um, when it comes to selecting an asset class. Uh, at the moment, uh, there's quite a mixed bag of kind of economies, globally speaking. In South Africa, it's, it's quite challenging. In South Africa, probably the asset class to look at is cash. We've had property, bonds, and equities all performing exceptionally well over the past. And so you see in aggregate, they all are looking quite expensive. Mm. Um, globally, though, there are some opportunities. And even within South Africa, with some more careful stock picking, there's opportunities. But from an asset class perspective, things are looking a little bit expensive. Um, in South Africa. Gwibis, do you agree? Uh, cash, that should be possibly where we're looking and maybe let's also get back uh, to that uh, balanced fund conversation that we left, up, left off uh, in a moment ago. Yes, if you look at our uh, balanced funds at the moment, uh, we are neutral to cautious at this stage or across the board on all the asset classes, meaning slightly underweight equities, we are actually on weight property and on weight bonds because we believe that um, bonds have actually, the yields have already kicked up in anticipation of uh, the US rising interest rates and even the, our Saab raising rates. Um, and likewise for property, uh, I think there are still, as Simon said, there are pockets of, of opportunities and pockets of value and that's where you expect your fund manager to, to focus. I would just like to come back to the, the equity. Sure. If you can just touch on the equity quickly. Sure. Um, the, there are lots of analysts um, saying that equity is very expensive with a PE ratio of more than 20 at this stage. But you know, if you stripped out the two extraordinary items, which is uh, SA breweries, um, which constitutes about 13% of our uh, index, it's risen by 50%. If you take that out, uh, the PE ratio comes down to 18. If you take out NASPAS, which is another extraordinary, it comes down to 16, which is actually then slightly uh, expensive, but it's not extraordinarily so. So I would, I would as Simon has said, within the, the remaining rest of the, the companies, you can still pick value. Mm. Can we still pick value there? Um, absolutely. I mean, if, uh, looking individually, there are some, some good shares. Mm -hmm. um, 
that being said, you know, looking at just PE values on their own, I think is limiting. The issue in South Africa is these macro headwinds, you mentioned some of them. And so not to look at PE in isolation, but to look at PE relative to growth prospects. So a PE ratio of 16, 18 might seem like a reasonable value, but without the growth pros prospects backing that, that PE ratio, then things are a little bit more concerning. And that's, I think, where the key issue is in South Africa, where you know, with these macro headwinds, mining not doing so well, potential interest rate increases, there's a lot of uncertainty in South Africa, and those headwinds are going to push against the growth. And without the growth, it's difficult to justify the PE. Before we go back to Gerbis in Cape Town, we've seen some great earnings from companies over the past couple of years or so. Yeah. Times are getting a lot tougher. So now if you're in being invested in these particular companies, should you adjust your, your, your earnings expectations a lot less? Absolutely. It's a, it's a great point, but it's, it's kind of, you've got to look at earnings separate from share prices. Okay. So of course earnings are going to affect share price returns, but they're not direct because what will happen is the market will have some kind of expectation for earnings and earnings growth. Companies that beat those expectations, the share prices can even go up. So uh, earnings can fall, but if they fall by less than expected, maybe the share price goes up. So it's not direct. That being said, I do think that those headwinds mm -hmm. um, that companies are facing, even with good management teams, they sometimes can't get around those headwinds and that can put pressure on earnings. So yes, I would decrease my earnings expectations and my earnings growth within the South African space. Gwibis, let me come back to you. You mentioned two big companies at the top that you said uh, those are exceptional, SAB and NASPARS. Where else are you seeing value on the stock market? Are there any particular companies that you are eyeing and thinking they offer value? Yes, uh, I think there are actually quite a few sectors. If you focus on sectors, things like the, the medical sector, hospitals, uh, private hospitals, uh, companies like Mediclinic and Netcare, uh, even Aspen. Um, and then also, you were talking about the droughts. Uh, I think the food sector is also uh, looking attractive. You look at Zither or something like Tiger Brands. So focus on a sector that, that is showing good growth prospects, as Simon has said. Don't just look at PE ratios, but look for sectors that's offering good growth prospects. If you can add to that, something like Mediclinic and Netcare has been doing is they've been diversifying offshore. So you not to get, getting good growth from the sector and the company, you're also getting the, the benefit of the offshore currency. Yeah. So look for companies that can diversify you not only across sectors, but also across currencies. So Simon, would that be safe to say if you were picking uh, stocks here, rather look at the ones that are diversified or have an offshore exposure? Um, yes, with, with a word of caution though, I mean sometimes these globally diversified stocks do have quite an expensive rating. You know, South Africa's prospects aren't looking good and so they've attracted a premium. Um, in a balanced fund, however, we don't only have to look in South Africa and that's one of the benefits of being in a balanced fund. Mm -hmm. We get to allocate globally. And so globally, there are some great asset classes. One of them we think are US banks. Uh, December rate hike could push up margins. They're getting good earnings growth. Uh, and at the same time, they're cutting costs, in increasing the technology, decreasing branch costs and so forth. So you've got kind of re revenue going up, and operating profit going up, and you've got costs coming down, get some nice operational leverage. Mm -hmm. So good earnings growth we expect from, from US banks. So there are good opportunities out there. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in and telling us about strategies for 2016. Uh, certainly some things to think about there. Uh, to all of your commentary and insight from Simon Sylvester, equity analyst from Resco Asset Management, and Quibus Lowe, who's not only who's the uh, chief investment officer from Con Tigo. Uh, that's it for this week's edition of Finweek Money Matters.